Welcome back friends. In this video we will be talking about the introduction of the 30S uh, ribosomal subunit inhibitors of bacteria. So let us talk about 30S ribosome inhibitor. Okay. 30S subunit ribosome subunit inhibitor of bacteria. Okay, and uh, they are also protein synthesis inhibitors. And as they are uh, they are inhibiting the protein synthesis, they are a kind of bacteriostatic in nature. So they will not kill the bacteria. Instead, they will halt the growth of bacteria. So they are bacteriostatic in nature. And uh, the class uh, name for this kind of antibiotic is, is, is a very very common name. It's tetracycline. So the name is tetracycline. Okay, and among this tetracycline, what we are having some examples, and the examples that we can take here as doxycycline, minocycline. So doxycycline and minocyclines. Okay, so they are about cyclines. So the uh, that's how to memorize the name cyclines. So they are 30s subunit inhibitors. Anyways. Now the property about these tetracyclines again, they can bind with calcium and magnesium. So it is not recommended to take them with dairy product. That means, uh, that means let's talk about here. Let's say, let's say this is our antibiotic. It can usually pair with magnesium, iron, or calcium. So that's why uh, milk is containing calcium, magnesium, uh, and antacids are also containing magnesium. So it is not recommended to take with. So do not take with. antacid or dairy products so that's uh, first property that i'm going to talk right and uh, except for that everything is fine no problem about that anyways uh, now the spectrum of act antibi uh, antibiotic activity for this type of antibiotics are broad so the spectrum is here is a broad spectrum antibiotics and that means it's covering very large area area from protozoa so let me write from protozoa now you know that protozoa can cause several gi tract problems so this gi protozoa like grda and amoeba and all, uh, not amoeba actually grda and all these things and it can can go against mycoplasma so it is also another part mycoplasma and it can go against rickettsia so you can see how variety, uh, how much variety it can show. Rickettsia, it can go against Chlamydia as well as syphilis. So it can go against Chlamydia. Okay. Okay. So it can go against this kind of bacteria: Protozoa, Mycoplasma, Rickettsia, Chlamydia, and all of them. Right, and what is the therapeutic approach? Therapeutic approach is telling us that we can use them against a rickettsia, which is to go against typhus. So we can go against typhus, which is caused by rickettsia. Right, so it's caused by rickettsia, and and also. Uh, it can go against chlamydial infections, it can go against protozoal infection and all this. Now in case of protozoal infection, in case of protozoal infection, we can uh, orally absorb this. So they are having a slight or very good, very good oral absorptivity. Absorptivity. That's very common. They are having very good oral absorptivity, and uh, they can be uh, treated or they can be taken as oral absorptive uh, to go against protozoal infection usually. Okay, so that's the therapeutic use. But there are certain side effects uh, which is all always associated with antibiotic treatment, and those uh, side effects are here in this case diarrhea. It is all, all most of the side effects are related with our GI infection or gastrointestinal infections or condition like a gastric upset, gastric upset, and it is uh, linked with enterocolitis, diarrhea, enterocolitis, diarrhea, 
right, is also linked to its super infection. So what we mean, what do we mean by super infection? It means, so let us talk about super infection a little bit here. Let's say this is our intestinal region. Somewhere there, there are bacteria. Let's say there are these green bacteria present. There are these red bacteria present. Few. And very, very most of them are the green bacteria that are present there, which is the normal microflora, right? And if we put some antibiotic from outside, let's say here it is the antibiotic is, uh, let's say, this in this color. Uh, this is our antibiotic, for example, in this case. The antibiotic enters. As a result of that, it starts to kill. It starts to kill all of this uh, normal microflora, which are green. So as a result, those red microflora, which are a kind of opportunistic pathogen, that means usually when normal microflora are present, this red bacteria will not cause any harm due to their uh, very few number, right? Because the normal microflora won't allow them to grow there. But when, due to the antibiotic treatment, normal microflora are getting hampered, in those cases, this opportunistic red microflora would start to grow. So they will grow. And after a certain time, what we can see here, what we can see, so let me draw another image and I'll let you know that after certain days, we'll get this red microflora go growing and growing. Very more red microflora will grow and very few of those uh, normal microflora will be there. So as a result, these red microflora now can cause several infections. Though they are present from throughout the time, now this red microflora here acts as, they can act as, opportunistic opportunistic pathogen Let's change the color opportunistic pathogen right that is very very dangerous so in this kind of infection by this opportunistic pathogen normally residing in our body is called as it is termed as super infection oh sorry we have already written that name, so I'm not, I don't need to write it anymore. It is called as super infection. Okay, and that this thing, this kind of super infection can be caused due to uh, the treatment, uh, prolonged treatment using tetracycline antibiotics, right? So, it, we, so you should be very careful using this tetrabiotic, right? So that's uh, basic, and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.